it's her. She's logging on. She's praying right now. then we also have moderators also right so a moderator is a third variable in the equation right so what's another variable that can affect the strength of the relationship between religion and spirituality and a positive variable right and that can be mental health well-being uh, increased uh, psychological support whatever the researchers are looking at right this is something that's actually very interesting um, and I, f I found this in concurrently in lots of different research right Females tend to be a lot more religious than males, right? And there are a number of different reasons we can explain that, right? Number one, women tend to spend their free time a lot better than males do, right? Females, women tend to volunteer more. Women tend to be involved in much more pro-social hobbies, right? This can also relate to personality psychology here in that women tend to be much higher on agreeableness, right? And agreeableness predicts communal relationships, right? warmth, nurturance, social bonding, you want to be around people, right? You look for the better in people, right? You want to have a supportive environment around you, right? Men are much higher on disagreeableness, right? Um, and we can see the difference here in this, in this clip right here. I want to ask you something. You're all church-going folk. I really want to ask you something. Do you think God knew what he was doing when he created woman? Huh? No shit. I really want to know. Or do you think it was just another one of his minor mistakes, like tidal waves, earthquakes, floods? So what do you think? Women, a mistake? Or did he do it to us on purpose? Because I really want to know. Because if it's a mistake, maybe we could do something about it. Find a cure. Invent a vaccine. Build up our immune systems. <laughs> Ethnicity is also a strong moderator in that minority populations tend to be much more religious as well. For those who want to know more about the historical context of religiosity in the African American community, you can watch my interview with the Reverend Jennifer from the Faith Matters Initiative um, and also my video on Is Japan Religious to learn more about the psychometric foundation for actually measuring religiosity, right? Something that I'm not getting too much into, in, the, into in, in this video, but I've done in previous videos. God. God, I need you. I, I know I haven't prayed like I should. I know that I haven't, I haven't followed you like I should. But I need you right now. Lord, I've been so angry at Tony. And I am still so angry at him. But I don't want to lose my marriage. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. And then it's also important to look at the difference between quantitative and qualitative studies. So as of now, I've only been talking about quantitative studies, right? So that's just looking at human beings as numbers, mean scores, or standard deviations, and just calculating through different uh, data, anal data analysis procedures, right, how they measure across different domains, right? But qualitative studies are just as, if not more important, right? So that's using thematic analysis, um, different ways of coding, and looking at much smaller sample of individuals, right? But looking at more of the comprehensive picture as to how religion and spirituality may impact their lives, their worldview. I would also say that case studies are just as important too, right? And like, even just looking at one individual, if you think about it, 
we love biographies, right? We love hearing firsthand narratives of how a person's life was influenced, right? You can say that the development of films, podcasts, art are all related to that single case design, right? So to that case studies, right? So begin by telling us your name, assuming you're allowed to tell us that much. My name is Jean. My little cross that I had around my neck was taken from me. May I have it back? Show us a little more cooperation first. Recite our Lord's Prayer. Not unless you hear my confession. Jeanne, listen to me very carefully. We are all men of faith, and we shall earnestly strive for the salvation of your body and your soul. We do this in the name of our Holy Mother Church, who never closes our arms to those who would return to her. But we cannot help you unless you submit to our learned judgment and authority. Take heed of this charitable admonition, for if you persist in refusing our help, we shall have no choice but to abandon you to the secular powers. You, who claim to be my judges, you be careful, for you too one day will be judged. Don't ever doubt the impact that a single story can have on changing your own narrative, changing your own life, right? So it's important that science also reflects that. And then another really important part of the study is looking at future directions, right? How can we better measure and understand the link between religion, spirituality, and positive health um, for human beings in general, not just adolescents, right? Number one, looking at a much broader array of religion spiritual variables right again and that goes all down to operationalization what does religion and spirituality mean right at a cognitive level does it mean having a enriched understanding of different aspects of religion at an affective level right how does religion impact your emotions does it give you a positive mood does it keep you more in touch with the overall suffering of human beings right more of that experiential level, right? At a behavioral level, level, how does it impact those concrete behaviors? How often do you go to church? How often do you, you know, recite different passages from holy texts, right? How often do you engage with God in your own private, in your own private self, right? A spiritual level, right? Looking at all these different domains is very, very important. Now, the interesting thing about skeptics, atheists, is that uh, they're always looking for proof. Certainty. Question is, what on earth would we do if we found it? We? Oh, yes. At times when I experience a total loss of faith, days, months, when I don't know what the hell I believe in God or the devil, Santa Claus or Tinkerbell. Yet there's something that keeps digging and scraping away inside me. It feels like God's fingernail. And uh, finally I can take no more of the pain and I get shoved out from the darkness back into the light. And then you might be asking yourself, right? I mean, this is a really rosy picture, right? Like religion, spirituality, thumbs up all the way across the board. That's not necessarily the case, right? Looking, a broader, looking at a broader range of processes is also very important too, right? What are the individual characteristics and social characteristics which may predict a maladaptive experience with religion and spirituality, right? And there have been studies that are found in this meta-analysis uh, looking at different factors which may predict that, right? Especially poor parent-child relationship. That's probably the strongest one. I get it now, okay? I get why you can't stand me. Okay. All right. No, at least now I know the real reason why you hate me. Look, I heard you admit it to her, like you were talking about cornflakes. You hate me. I hate you? Wait a second. Okay, we've had some problems, man, but we're figuring it out, okay? Oh, that is bullshit. Admit it. You wish I wasn't here with that expression in my eyes? I heard you. Hold on. Enough with the drama, all right? Knock it off. You misheard me. I can't stand it here. Look, can't you see that? No, but thank you for telling me again. I keep forgetting, it's all about you. Why don't I just pack us up? We'll just, we'll just go on the road together. We could be hobos. Because you wasted all our money. You can't force a dream onto someone else, Dad. Yes, I can. I can force a dream on you. Why are you yelling? Because it's a good dream. 
and beyond just poor parent-child relationship, right? I spoke more in this video about how at an internal level, religiosity can actually be a detriment to our worldview, our life, right? Through the in-group, out-group bias, right? Uh, so watch that video if you want more context into that, right? The study also suggests for individuals, researchers to study more positive youth outcomes, right? As most of the studies looking at negative mental health outcomes, right? So that's the basis for the work that we do at our mindfulness lab, right? We're a positive psychology lab, right? So it's not enough for people to just not have mental health symptoms, right? They also need to have a promotion, an increase, a an, an array of well-being characteristics also, right? self-mastery, environmental flourishment, right? Meaningful relationships, right? A sense of purpose, a cohesive narrative of life. The role of culture is important here also, and the study talks about how the majority of studies have been done in a Western context. There, there, there have been studies that have shown that in a religious context, right? So growing up in a religious country does predict higher levels of happiness, right? And that's, again, right? We're looking at broad national data right here there are when you look at such a broad macro level there are little nuances that get lost always right so if you're lower in religiosity or even if you're an atheist and you're living in a highly religious context right that would probably predict lower levels of mental health uh, lower levels of well-being higher levels of mental health issues right because there's a individual environmental mismatch that's happening right so it's important to look at those differences of culture also right having more experimental designs is important also as and you can say that for like all of the social sciences right and that's just because it's much harder to do an experimental design right doing some sort of cross-sectional uh, correlational design is much easier right you just give individual surveys right and you just measure the different domains of the surveys um, either at a single point or across time, right? That's, it's just much more feasible to do. It's much harder to do an experimental design, right? There has to be an intervention. You have to manualize the intervention. You have to teach people to do the intervention. You have to have some sort of adherence checks, some sort of feasible you know, processes to make sure the intervention is being implemented correctly. You have to have a sample group. You have to make sure that they stay in the intervention, right? There are so many different logistical nightmares that happen, right? And again, our mindfulness lab has done a number of uh, mindfulness interventions in our school and we also have some peer-reviewed papers available on my website for you to learn more about that so I